We put our focus now on this third Sunday of Lent into the words for these Sunday in that first lesson. I read the one verse. We're going to hear the whole words of Isaiah 42. I have been silent for a long time. I have kept still. I have restrained myself. But now, like a woman giving birth, I will scream. I will gasp and pant. I will dry up mountains and hills. I will make all their grass wither. I will turn rivers into islands. I will dry up pools. I will lead the blind on a way they do not know. Along paths they do not know, I will direct them. Ahead of them, I will turn darkness into light and rough places into level ground. These are the things I will accomplish for them. I will not abandon them. They will be turned back and completely disgraced. Those who trust in an idol, those who say to molten images, you are our gods. You deaf ones, listen. You blind ones, watch carefully so that you can see. Who is as blind as my servant? Who is as deaf as my messenger whom I sent? Who is as blind as my associate, as blind as a servant of the Lord? You, Israel, see many things but you do not observe. Israel opens his ears, but he does not hear. Because of his own righteousness, the Lord was pleased to make his law great and glorious. Here ends our first reading. Continue with our second reading today. It's taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians Reading in chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. This is also our sermon text for today. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. And do not participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes things visible. Therefore it is said, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Here ends our epistle reading. A verse, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in Him may have eternal life. Amen. Our Lord gives us through the Gospel writer John. Today we read those verses in the ninth chapter. As Jesus was passing by, He saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked Him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that God's works might be revealed in connection with him. I must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and spread the mud on the man's eyes. Go, Jesus told him. Wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed, and he came back seen. They brought this man who had been blind to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes, so the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man told them. I washed, and now I see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man's not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others were saying, How can a sinful man work such miraculous signs? There was division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. The man replied, He is a prophet. They answered him, You are entirely born in sinfulness, yet you presume to teach us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. When he found him, he asked, Do you believe in the Son of God? Who is he, sir? The man replied, That I may believe in him. Jesus answered, You have seen him, and he is the very one who is speaking with you. 
Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he knelt down and worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world, in order that those who do not see will see, and those who do see will become blind. Here ends our Gospel reading. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, dear friends. Again, as I mentioned, the word of our Lord upon which we want to base our meditation today are those words from Paul's letter to the Ephesians in the fifth chapter. We listen again just to that final verse. Therefore it is said, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. You know, many a time I'll pause and just marvel at God's incredible timing and how He puts everything together because there are things that come together in such a way that it's just clearly, totally the hand of God. Wake up. Wake up, sleeper. You know, some would say, oh, wouldn't that have been better last week with the time change and springing ahead? But if you're at all like me, it's actually now this weekend in some regards, it's actually harder because now we've done a, a week of this transition. All of a sudden, the body's kind of going, where'd that hour go? Right? And because now all of a sudden, it's 7 a.m. and it's still dark. Now, the nice thing is, is that it's like 8, 8.30 p.m. and it's still kind of light. But for us morning folks, I shouldn't say that because I'm not really a morning folk, but I know many of you are. <laughs> you know, you're, we're, we're getting ready and excited for these coming weeks to pass so that, again, the light is shining at 5.36 a.m. so we can get our stuff done in the early morning hours. Right? Isn't it so much better to get things done when the light is shining than rather in the darkness? I mean... It makes sense. Right. And, and so we take this natural analogy, this natural picture of light versus darkness, and we let our gracious God speak to us again today. And we are encouraged. We are directed to hear this truth that Christ's light shines brightly. It shines brightly on us. And, and, and note the subtle difference here in the Apostle Paul's words. Right? We, we understand that contrast of dark and light. And a lot of times it's the idea of, you know, you, you were in the dark and Christ has now brought you out into the light of His love. And that makes us feel good and we're joyous and happy. But, but note the difference here. And it's, it's expressed in the Greek, but it comes out in our English translation as well. Look at verse 8 again. You're reading Ephesians 5. For you were once darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. So walk as children of the light. Do you hear that? It, it, it doesn't say that you and I were in the dark, the darkness of unbelief and ignorance and not knowing God's love and then the gospel shone on us and no it says you were darkness right friends understand that's our natural condition we're darkness the the, the darkness of sin the, the, the darkness of unbelief. The darkness of being opposed to the light of the world. By, by nature, that's our condition. And, and that's what the Apostle Paul was writing to the Ephesians about in the, in the verses preceding our text. He had kind of highlighted how they had all had behaved living in that darkness, being darkness. Their, their behavior and their action was, was rude. It was disgusting. It was the type of things that 
Here now, Paul says, we don't even want to mention, right? We don't, we don't want to participate in the fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them. It's shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. Now, we can react to that in two ways. We can go the way of, oh, the National Enquirer. Enquirer minds want to know, oh, what were they doing? Tell us, tell us, we want to know. Right? What are they doing? I want to know. Or, letting the mirror of the law reflect us and to look in that, And to say, Paul's right. Paul's right. I I don't want anyone to know what I've done in secret. No. Seeing those, those little statements out there. Facebook, the social media posts. And speaking to our generations. Could you imagine... If there had been the selfies and the recordings and the pictures of all the things we had done when we were kids, you think about that for a moment. Would you have been posting everything you were doing every day when you were a teenager or in your early 20s? That's one of the big shout outs on Facebook. Oh, thank goodness. There wasn't Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat and all these other things today back when I was a teenager. We don't say that boasting. We don't say that with any kind of pride. We were darkness, right? We were guilty of the fruits of darkness. And if we're going to be honest with ourselves, it still kind of applies even today too, doesn't it, at times? I mean, talk about the spotlight of public media. How, how would your life look? How, how would it work if you had a camera crew following you around every day? Recording everything you did all day long. I mean, in some regards, we might say, that'd be great because it would really remind me and encourage me to put the best foot forward. To really let Christ's light be shining out of me. It would, it would be a reminder if I had a camera and a spotlight on me all day long. I I think that would be a great thing because I would be in the best behavior. You know where I'm going, right? Wake up, sleeper. Rise. Because Christ shines on you. Christ is there with that spotlight. He's brought us out of darkness. Not out of the dark. He's brought us out of the darkness that was us. He's brought us out of unbelief. He's brought us out of being hostile and an enemy towards Him. He's given us the direction and the ability to see how we do put our best foot forward. What it means to live a Christ-like life. What, What it means when we say, love like Jesus loves you. We understand that because Christ has shined His light on us. And we have this joy. But it's hard. And so we hear the encouragement. Again, today, wake up. Wake up. And know Christ is shining on you. The kids that would relate to that, that connect with that, are back in Kingdom Kids right now. But if I hold up this finger, they know what's coming. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm going to let it shine all the time. 
this little light of mine. That's one of those fun songs that the children learn. And these are the kind of songs that they take home. One family reported, and they shared this, this and, and, I, and I read about this, I said how, how true this is. Family, older brother, little sister. Little sister had learned that song, and it was stuck in her head. And so all day long, every day, she'd be walking around the house. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And she'd just be singing that. And exactly what you're doing right now, that's what the parents would do. They'd be smiling. They loved it. Well, the mom reports that one day, her and her big brother got in a fight. That was kind of a mean fight. And she wasn't innocent to the point that she got sent to her room. Next morning, she came down all sad. Maybe sad's not even the right word, still mad. And her mom said, where's that little light? Why aren't you singing that? My brother burnt it out. (laughs) Can't we relate? Can't we relate? Right? It's, It's hard. It's hard living out in this world. It's hard being the light when there's darkness all around us. Friends, God understands that. That's why He blesses us with these words again today. He is again coming in love to us. And He's saying, Christ's light shines brightly on you. Let let that light glow. And so Paul says, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes things visible. And then backing up to verse 9. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what's pleasing to the Lord. And don't participate in the fruitless deeds of darkness. The fruit of the light. Letting that light shine means goodness, righteousness, and truth. Goodness. Doing, doing that which is, is good, which is meaningful. Not to save yourself, friends. No, Christ has already shined on us, right? His light of love, His light of salvation is on us, but He gives us that, that fruit of goodness. Putting that best, best foot forward to, to be good, to do what's good and right, to be moral in an immoral society. To make the kind of decisions that reflect and say, Christ loves me. He loves me not that I continue on in a life of rebellion and sin. No, He loves me and encourages me to express goodness in my life, to be moral, to be proper. To let that light, that camera, follow me around every day and I'm on my best behavior in thanks to God for the goodness He gives to me. The fruit of light consists in all Righteousness. Right? Righteousness. Being right with God. Again, the power of Christ in His redeeming work has made us righteous before God. We're righteous because Christ's light is shining on us and is shining out of us. And so we have this righteousness. We don't live like the world lives. We live as God guides and directs us. We live in that righteousness, knowing He has clothed me in the robe of His righteousness and His holiness. And I wear that robe with joy and pride. I wear that robe with thankfulness because of what He's done. The fruit of the light consists in all truth. Right? That is our calling. To live in truth, to speak the truth. But we let all the scripture, right, interpret and be a part of it. Why did you say that? Well, it's the truth. Need to live 
in the light of truth. And that, 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 that's correct. And remember Jesus' other guidance through the Apostle Paul. Jesus' own words. Speak the truth in love. Right? That's part of righteousness. That's part of goodness. I live the truth, I speak the truth, but I do so in a way that shows Christ-like love. Jesus wasn't mean and harsh and uncaring. He was perfect love, perfect righteousness, perfect goodness. Oh, yeah. He called sin a sin. He dealt with the unbelievers. He dealt with the hypocrites. But look how he dealt with them. Right? He didn't lower himself down to their level and play their games and their tricks. Right? No, he conducted himself as that perfect God. He lived his life here on this earth surrounded by that darkness in pure joy and perfectness, complete righteousness. He loved perfectly. That love shines on us today. He walked perfectly. He guides us each day in the righteousness that is ours. We have these gifts. We have this opportunity. May the Lord continue to guide us. May we revel in the fact that God in love has brought us out of darkness. May we revel in the joy that this light is ours shining on us, and God's allowing us to reflect that light in all we do, showing the fruit of the light in goodness, righteousness, and truth. Amen. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.